I quit. It doesn't matter anyway. I hate you. You're such a fraud. For as far back as I can remember, I've had a voice inside my head that said, I don't belong. And that might seem strange to you, because I know I've won the jackpot of American privilege. White, male, heterosexual, born in a Christian home. I'm even right-handed. All of the systems around were designed for people like me to thrive. And yet I still felt out of place. I didn't feel safe growing up in my home, in my church, in my school. My church taught that all were sinners, and therefore everyone was going to hell. And so every day at my Christian school, I would pray for God to take away my sins. And every night, I would be sent home with a detention slip, proof that my prayers hadn't been answered. And I would dread my dad coming home each night for the spanking that I knew was coming. I felt, at the same time, my sexual interest started at a young age, and so I felt dirty, and I felt ashamed. I lived in constant fear of being left out of heaven, being kicked out of school, or being isolated from my family in punishment. So I played the good kid. I started hiding to avoid shame and punishment. And I've realized that if I have felt like I didn't belong, even with this privilege, that many people have felt like that even more so. When you realized that the sign out front of the church that said, all are welcome here, didn't apply to people like you. Or when you heard someone say, I love you, and you thought, but would you, if you really knew me? Or when you got that promotion, and then you realized just how much you'd had to sacrifice of yourself in order to get here. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a common model for us understanding how we get our needs met. And in that model, it's clear that belonging is a key to thriving. And yet that same model makes it seem like thriving is only available to a select few. I envision a world where all are thriving, because they know that they belong. Where we can silence the voice in the back of our heads that says we don't belong, because every place is a safe place to belong. So let's define, or maybe redefine, belonging. I define belonging as the experience of safety to express one's authentic self with others. So it's the experience of safety to express one's authentic self to others. Because when we feel safe to do so, we go all in. We, ex we fully express ourselves, we access our creativity, we take risks, we thrive. But in the places where we don't feel safe, the fear of not belonging triggers our fight or flight response. The fight for belonging looks like trying to prove that I belong by getting one more sale, one more acknowledgement, one more piece of evidence that I'm approved by others. The flight from belonging looks like procrastination, putting things off, hiding, inauthenticity, people-pleasing to be accepted. We hide our true selves just to fit in. And yet, Many people don't have the luxury of hiding. Your differences are evident everywhere you go. So it's easy for me to see how you might want to withdraw from or fight against the systems that don't work for you and the people that put them there. But your voice could change the world, but you hold it back because it doesn't feel safe. I wanted to change the world. I wanted to show people the love of God rather than the judgment that I experienced. So I went to school to be a youth pastor. But as I got further into the Bible, I started to have serious doubts about my faith. So instead of going into the ministry, I went into the business world. I thought I can make some changes there. I got married, started a family, two kids, 
a house with an actual picket fence, joined a church, became a leader in the church, a teacher in the church, and a worship leader. If you had taken out a textbook on belonging, you could have seen my name and my picture right at the top as the example of belonging. But it didn't feel like belonging. My faith was beginning to unravel. I, I felt like a fraud at work. I was unhappy in my marriage. I was contemplating divorce. And I was ashamed of my own infidelity and the lies to cover it up. I was hiding in every area of my life, and it was exhausting keeping it up. But being a leader allowed me to hide right in plain sight. It also allowed me to try to create a place of belonging for others that I had never experienced for myself. You might have become a leader for the same reason, a parent, a teacher, a business leader, someone who could show others their own greatness so that they would never feel left out. And yet, you've never experienced that belonging for yourself. And worse, you might have resigned yourself to the idea that you never will. I finally got tired of pretending. One Sunday morning, I woke up and I stopped questioning my faith. I decided not to go back to church, and I never went back. I left my career, I went into nonprofit work, and at a fraction of my salary, I felt like a failure. Finally asked for the divorce. I was confident I would create a place of belonging somewhere else. And I ended up in a one-room efficiency apartment. I texted my ex-wife one night. I quit my career. I quit my faith. I quit my marriage. I don't have much else left to quit. One night at my home, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Who even was I? I couldn't even remember anymore through all the pretending. I was so angry at this person who had caused me and others so much pain through his lies. I just looked in the mirror at myself with tears streaming down my face and repeating over and over, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I made a decision that night that I would become a person that I could trust, that I would live an honest, authentic life, and that I would find belonging. So I went into deep self-discovery, and I knew that there was a leader inside of me and that that leader had to emerge whole in order to be effective. I thought that belonging would come from finding people who thought like I did. So I searched for new communities, new religious communities, new relationships, jobs, meetups, even Burning Man and kink conventions. What I found was that belonging didn't come from finding people who thought like I did, from being a part of a group or even being approved by the group but it came from having the courage to speak my voice. It came from finding the courage to be my authentic self with others. Other people are really our best mirrors. They teach us and show us that our humanness is common to us all and that our greatness is available to us all. Do you want to seed greatness in the world? Do you want to make a lasting impact? Then seek out your places of belonging where it feels safe for you to belong, and then generously pass that gift on to others. Here's how. First, find places where, it is, where you feel safe to fully belong and to fully be yourself. Belonging is best experienced in the presence of other people who have also experienced their own belonging. 
Number two, be honest with yourself and with others. Allow people to truly see you. The key to belonging is to bear the temporary discomfort of potential judgment so that you can create the, t- the permanent freedom of authenticity. Number three, be long in your authenticity. In other words, belonging is a practice. Take the time to allow your nervous system the chance to recalibrate for you to feel safe, for you to be able to thrive in those environments. And as you do, you'll become a master at belonging. And soon you'll be able to go anywhere and belong anywhere that you choose to be. And then number four, take that experience of belonging back to your communities, to your homes, your churches, your schools. When the people that you serve know that they belong, they'll take action to contribute. They'll understand their impact. They'll know that they matter and they'll thrive together. As I've learned a deeper experience of belonging, I've created thriving in every area of my life. And it's not always perfect, but because now it's not about getting it right, I can boldly confront those things that aren't working, and I can boldly live the things that are. I'm creating thriving in every relationship that I have. I've had hard conversations with my dad. We've healed childhood trauma, resentment, and disconnection. And now we're creating a place of hope, home, and understanding. My ex-wife and I have a thriving family, even though we don't live in the same house, and even though we don't always agree. And in the bedroom, I create a place for exploring so that it creates connection and intimacy. I found an understanding of God that feels connected, alive, and abundant. I've learned to own my privilege and to include others with it. In my work in speaking and coaching, I create places every day for people to experience belonging and often hear words like, thank you for including me. And now, I boldly love myself. When I look in the mirror, all I see is love. Thriving is available to everyone. When we will create that, when we experience our own belonging and generously pass that gift on to others. Will you join me in creating that world?